Hey everyone, so in my last video I told the story of inmate Gary Thomas Allen, a man who landed on death row for killing his ex in front of their own two kids. Now after making this video public, a bunch of people claiming to be related to Gary and Gail came to my page calling me a liar and telling me that I pulled the story out of thin air. Comments were made that I fabricated everything that was said, and I was just overall spreading lies. Initially, someone asked me not to air the video, and I expressed that it was not fair that national and local news stations can report the story, court documents can release information about the case that is public information, and not only that, there are hundreds of websites, both for and against Gary Allen, with the same information. Why can't I express in a video what is available for people to read and research on their own? I didn't get grieving family members commenting, though. I got family members that attacked me and my credibility, and that caused other people to question if the story I told was fake or not. So to address a few things, his granddaughter stated that her grandfather Gary never said he did drugs, and his mother didn't do drugs either, even though it's pretty rare for a grandfather losing his memory to sit down with his grandchildren and talk about his drug using days at such a young age. I would just like to point out that the Amnesty International, who is pro-Gary, wrote this, and it included statements from the court documents. The defense presented an expert to detail mitigating evidence. Dr. Nelda Ferguson testified that Gary Allen had been raised in poverty in an unstable family environment, that he had been rejected by his alcoholic mother, and that he himself had suffered debilitating mood swings which resulted in numerous suicide attempts. In his late teens, Gary Allen began to abuse alcohol and drugs. He was treated for psychological problems, including while serving in the Navy. The mitigating expert concluded that Gary Allen had a personality disorder related to schizophrenia. At the sentencing, his parents also appeared as witnesses, testifying that there was mental illness on both sides of the family. The defendant himself testified that he drank as much alcohol as he could as often as he could. This is an excerpt from another court document. The record shows extensive mitigating evidence was presented by defense expert Dr. Nelda Ferguson. She testified Allen was raised in poverty and hunger in an unstable family led by an alcoholic mother who rejected him. As a teenager, Allen suffered debilitating mood swings which resulted in five or six attempts. He began to abuse alcohol and drugs when he was 17 or 18 years old. All of Allen's siblings are alcoholics. Even though Allen's IQ indicates he is bright, he ultimately dropped out of high school after a six-month placement in the Bowley State School. Dr. Ferguson concluded that the appellant was genetically predisposed to mental illness and diagnosed Allen as having a personality disorder related to schizophrenia. And the court documents state that the defense focused on maternal rejection, drug and alcohol abuse, hospitalizations, the Navy, Gary's personality disorders, and much more. It is stated that Gary was treated and interviewed by multiple people and out of his mouth, he claimed that these things happened to him as a child and he claimed he did these things growing up. Now it's possible that Gary could have felt like his mom abandoned him and maybe his mom felt like she did everything she could. All I know is that the information came out of Gary's mouth. Nowhere in the court documents does it state that when his mother took to the stand, she disagreed with his defense team. Did she not say anything because she didn't want the court to give him a harsh sentence? His defense team also built a case around this information to garner sympathy from the court. So if anything, Gary is the liar, not me. If I am expressing what the inmate said, it does not make what I am saying untrue. I am not intentionally spreading lies. I am just stating what the court documents are saying. I remember telling the story of the trans inmate Skylar de Leon. Well, detectives said that Skylar was the craziest pathological liar ever and believed Skylar only changed their gender because they wanted sympathy. Skylar claimed so many things that were probably most likely not true. We couldn't even get the full story of what happened from the two victims that were killed. The story came from a lying killer. Why would we ever trust something that comes out of a lying killer's mouth 100%? There's no possible way, unless it has been documented and verified, that everything the killer says happened to them growing up is 100% true. What if they are saying it to make people feel bad for them and to get a lighter sentence? We should just take these stories for what they are. Stories. The only true fact is that the killer killed, they landed on death row, and either they were executed or they are awaiting their execution. Neither the prosecutors nor the defense claim that Gary's mom was clean and was actually a good mother. 
On the contrary, it states that his mother said not only her family, but his dad's side of the family had mental health issues. It ran in the family. It seemed to me as if she was also talking in a way that the court would grant her son leniency. With that being said, I'm a nobody. I get less views than these news stations, and I just state facts, and if you don't like the facts that are presented in court, or the story that was told, maybe we should start with reaching out to the state to have some information changed or fixed. Reach out to the hundreds of websites and maybe ask if they could take down the stories. Reach out to news stations and their websites to take down information about Gary, and if all of that is gone, I would not have a story. Hundreds of people would not have a story on them. I don't bash inmates, not even the ones who are sexually assaulting innocent lives who are too young to protect themselves. I get so disgusted by a lot of things I read and oftentimes I have to skip over autopsies because I just can't do it. I think I have been fair in telling just the story. I might have called an inmate or two a dingbat in some of my videos or the crimes they committed were horrible, but telling the story, I speak facts and never pull anything out of thin air. Sorry to anyone grieving one of these death row inmates who have killed. I hope everyone can heal and avoid watching such videos that bring up pain and hatred.